Good day, nerds, and welcome to episode 77 of the Nerd Cantina Show. I'm your host, Ken, joined by my co-host, Steve, and we're going to cover this week's nerd news. We're going to begin in the entertainment talk with some new ESRB ratings for video games. We've got Nintendo Switches sold out everywhere, and then some news on the new upcoming streaming service, NBC Universal's Peacock. And then we can move into some tech news with Zoom being hacked for account credentials, Big talk around the legislation that's currently in Congress called the Earn It Act. Some quick thoughts on the app TikTok. Some pandemic drones that are going to be monitoring uh, citizens and their temperature. And then some lighthearted space talk at the end. There's a lot of news this week. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Calling back all nerds. Nerds! Welcome back to episode 77 of the Nerd Cantina Show. And this last week, we are still suffering through some uh, some quarantining, but we did get to wrap up what was a, a, a pretty great show in uh, in the devs this week. And I yeah, think that I, was that was insane. And I think it's just want to remind everybody, because I feel like there's not a lot of people watching this. I don't really know very many people in real life that bothered to watch this show. And uh, it's it's definitely something people should go out and watch. So if you haven't, do so, so we have more people to discuss uh, our existence and determinism with. Yeah, I think we might have to do a Patreon breakdown at some point. No, yeah, I would love to do a a, a deeper discussion on uh, on some of the philosophy behind it, not just the the, the greatness. If you want to see some great acting, you want to see some some really kind of artistic shots, uh, a show that is okay with silence, okay with just capturing people's emotion and uh, and just the the scenery in general. Uh, it's it's incredibly well done, incredibly well acted. Uh, there's there's a lot to appreciate in that regard. Uh, and then the storytelling is is good. And then it will force you to think about your existence and think about the world potentially in a different way. And it's it's just had its season finale, so you could binge it. You know, no yeah. no more waiting anymore. We went week to week. You guys could just pound out all eight episodes in a wine filled quarantine day. <laughs> <laughs> I, d- I don't suggest drinking a lot of wine watching the show. Uh, there's, <laughs> there's there's definitely, uh, I don't know, some some deep topics in there, and the wine might uh, make it foggy. All right. But uh, let's see, let's jump into uh, some, some news this week, and I'll start with the ESRB ratings uh, for, for video games. So we get an update into uh, video games, and the ESRB has now created a new warning uh, for any games that have loot boxes or special in-game purchases or any type of random reward system. Yeah, I so I don't know exactly how I feel necessarily about this. Like the ESP, it's just a warning, you know, so it's T for T and it's going to have another box on the warning. There's there's parental controls built into all these systems to stop your kids from just spending money like crazy. Like I know a lot of parents that let their kids play under their gamer tag. And I, I've told my friends all the time is like the minute your kid gets like active in gaming and wants to game, create them their own gamer tag. One, because they could rack up their own achievements. And when they're older and they have a high achievement score, they'll thank you as I would have. But two, you can, you can regulate their playing time. You can regulate their purchasing power on their gamer tag. If you have them playing under your gamer tag, they have access to everything that you set, and most likely you don't set parent controls on your own shit, because the last thing I want to do when I'm trying to hurry up and download something or buy something is type in passwords and codes and, and whatnot. So, you know, for me, the, you know, this is just constantly trying to fix a problem that really shouldn't be there. Yeah, potentially. I, I think there's, I don't know, these are things, that, how many parents actually care about these ERB ratings? You know, if you really care about the ERCB ratings, then you're not letting your children play Call of Duty anyway, right? Because it's a mature game. And there, these ratings oftentimes are ignored anyway. So just by putting a label on it that, hey, there's loot boxes here, or there's you know, additional in-game random-based uh, purchases that could be... Uh, could be thrown out. I don't know if that's going to deter or change yeah, anybody's I decisions. I don't know how many people this is going to affect because either you're a gamer parent and you know what the game is about and you don't care about the ESRB, you know the content, and you know your kid, or you're a non-gamer parent that doesn't know shit and might not even understand what any of these symbols mean. 
So there's like a little subset of the non-gamer parent that is current on on ratings because they they are uninformed and they want to do the right make the right choice by their kid. But at the same time, like so, I went to play Rock Band with my daughter this weekend, um, and I signed into her profile for the singing and me for the guitar. And before the game would boot up, it was just like, yeah, your kid ain't allowed to play this game. Do you want this your kid to play this game? And like I had to under my account, click the button, put in my password to say they're like, no, I'm really here. I'm like, she's standing next to me. She can play. And then it was like, do you want to let her play it once or do you want to let her be able to play it all the time? You know, like there's mad parental controls built into these things. Like, I don't don't know how slapping another sticker on the outside of the game is really going to, you know, benefit this. I don't, I don't get it. Yeah. And I, th- I would just suggest that if, uh, if, if you're incredibly concerned about like these loot boxes, and we've talked about it in the past here on the show, uh, and it's been some time since we did when they were originally trying to, in, uh, kind of pass some legislation outlawing loot boxes and everything else because they're saying it's kind of like slot machines for kids. Uh, and it's we had that conversation with uh, Rachel Cohort from TakeThis.org uh, on video games. And she says, really, there is no science that, that really supports that this is some incredibly damaging slot machine-like addictive behavior uh, that exists. People don't play it because they're addicted to the to the loot boxes and there's no real scientific data that supports it. Uh, so if you are a parent who's over, who's really concerned about the effects that loot boxes are having on your child, uh, do some, do some research, understand what's in the science. Uh, not saying that it's, it's yeah, a good I, thing. I only have the free Fortnite dances. Let's put it like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I am not, I am not paying an extra dollar 99 to four ninety nine to see my character do the Dougie. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, but uh, that's that's up there. Let's keep talking video games, though, and let's talk about Nintendo Switches. As we've got a bunch of friends, I'm actually potentially looking to pick up a, a Switch here, uh, and but you just can't. You can't buy them right now. Yeah, I, I kind of love this story because it just shows the level of frustration parents are hitting a, in this quarantine. Like they t- they they went from mom and dad to mom and dad to it to teachers to daycare workers to you know baseball coaches to like you are you're running the whole gamut of <laughs> of mentors in your child's life now and parents need a break they just want something that they can occupy their kids the the iPad isn't doing it anymore so people are yeah the the switch is actually a great kind of family system you know the games are focused really on on younger kids and family games. I mean they do have the the adult games with it. You know Nintendo's not trying to box themselves in, but it's it's funny how many people are just like I need a fucking Switch. I just need it. Yeah, it, it's blown up in popularity uh, as far as you know. It's just a whole lot of people saying, "Ah, fuck the next gen console. I'm not waiting until Christmas." I need something now. And a bunch of people looking to go buy Switches. And yeah, they've been sold out it's pretty much since uh, the stay-at-home orders across the states have rolled out. And they said, I, I've got an alert on... Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of the website Camel, Camel, Camel. I, I'm a big supporter of Camel, Camel, Camel. It's for cheap people like me. It's a great way to track prices for, uh, for Amazon items. But I have an alert. So that way, if it becomes available, I'll at least be given the email to make a decision uh, to buy the Switch. Well, while we're on that subject, if you don't use the browser attachment Honey, have you ever heard of that? No. So Honey is a browser attachment you put in, and then anytime you go to check out your cart, it runs the gamut of like 30 coupon codes to give you the best coupon code before you check out. So that is also one, you know, little PSA for our listeners. Uh, If if anybody from Honey or Camel 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 is listening to this, we'd love to run an ad for you. (laughs) (laughs) I. I, I'm always sketchy with these things like Honey, like the website. I don't put any no, I, like I browser use, extensions used, or I've anything. I've used Honey. Yeah, I've used yeah. Honey. And a few yeah. times when yeah. I check out, all of a sudden it runs and I forget that it's it's on my computer. And it's just like checking this code, checking this code, checking this code. Here, saved you five bucks. Yeah. It's like, oh, snap. Thanks, buddy. But how is Honey using you? That's the question. It, it gave me five <laughs> bucks. It gave, like, like I said, we've said it before. You give me money, you take my data. That's fine. That's yeah, fine. That's a fair you're trade. Gonna take, you're going to take my data for free when I don't know about it. At least, at least give me monies. Yeah, I, I haven't, uh, I haven't tried that one out yet. Maybe, maybe I will. Uh, 
Camel, I camel, would suggest camel. it. Yeah, I would suggest if you're an online shopper, it's great because the minute you go to your cart, it just automatically does it. It's a, it just applies every coupon code on the internet to that site hmm. and gives you the the one that's going to take the most money off your purchase. Hmm. Camel, camel, camel is just a site that it's it's literally camel, camel, camel dot com, and it, you just put in a URL for a for an Amazon or a, a web based purchase, and uh, it'll tell you. The history of that of the price of that item over the last two years, and it'll tell you the cheapest it's ever been. It'll tell you what its price is today, what it normally discounts to around what part of the time of the year, and then you can put in alerts and say, "All right, I don't want to pay fifty dollars for this. I'm going to pay forty two dollars for it because it often goes below that." And it'll send you an email the day it goes below your desired to, price. To me, that is just like the Indian version of you. That's me. That, yeah. that, that knows how to write script. Came up with <laughs> came up with a, a program. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so in line with your it's, with it's, your thought process. And it's genius. And those people should be making a lot of money because they send out <laughs> every time you get an email with the price change. They don't give you the generic link. They give you their affiliate link. So every time you go back and repurchase something, you're you're giving them a commission. So it's a <laughs> it's a genius thing. I appreciate them. I don't know how many things I've bought on there. <laughs> Way cheaper because I've got no problem waiting to save a, fo- a couple bucks there. All right. Now that we're done telling everybody how to become better, cheaper Online consumers. Shoppers. <laughs> For, that's, a, that's a bonus there, nerds. Uh, <laughs> that was not on the outline. <laughs> All right. Now, so moving on from uh, from those, I don't even know where we're talking about. Oh, yeah. Switches. Sold out. Can't buy them. And there's a reason. One, one of the reasons why you can't buy them is just because uh, there's... I don't know, a bunch of bots Price out there. gougers, yeah. man. Price gougers. These fucking scalpers. Like, there's no concerts. So all the scalpers have now focused <laughs> their attention on Nintendo Switches in, in toilet paper. Yeah, and they're using auto-purchase bots that second things come come in stock, it's automatically being bought for them. Uh, and they're just stocking them up and selling them out on Facebook Marketplace or wherever the hell offer up whatever they're selling them on uh but yeah there's a bunch of people just snagging up these switches so if you're hoping to get one in the near future oh you've got to be quick and uh another story that's kind of switch adjacent is um yeah animal crossing is being removed from from hong kong and china due to so in animal crossing they have this uh creator part where you can make your like own flags you can make your own signs to put outside your own stores so it originally the intent was to you know put steve's a steve's house sign outside my house when you know so everybody comes up to my island can see my little sign or the picture i drew or whatever well Chinese dissidents are <laughs> taking these signs and, you know, putting up free Hong Kong and, and anti-China kind of, you know, signs in their Animal Crossing islands and people are visiting these these islands for the world. And now Animal Crossings has been like the the hub of Hong Kong protests since, you know, <laughs> you can't take to the streets with the quarantines and things like that. People are using this cute kid game to... Uh, to to push their their anti government uh, message, which That's I think great. is genius. That's I think great. it's genius, <laughs> like because it's so funny. Because like it's so cute, like it's so cute, <laughs> and <Yeah>. like, <laughs> like <laughs> it's insane, man. Like, and I've seen some of the signs. Like they're elaborate. Like they're elaborate. Like I I could barely make a you know a crude photo on this creator, and some of these people are just like all out billboards or they're, they're taking like five signs and stacking them together to a giant billboard. And it's just like, yeah, free Hong Kong. And it's, it's insane. Good for them, <laughs> man. Good for them. But they, China's putting a kibosh on that. You know, they're also, they're also banning online gaming, which I do not see going very well for them at all. Like, like at some point they just kind of like want riots in the street, I think, or something. Cause you know, they're, they're closing off any, online video game that, so, that exports to the world. I was going to say, yeah, that that story is, it's not that they're ban- banning online gaming, but they're ban- line, banning online gaming with people outside of China. Uh, so, I mean, they still got a billion people to play with uh, within their own country. So I, I'm i sure for many, it's, yeah, but it's who, a nothing. Who wants to tell someone to go bang their mom from your own country? You, you know, I'm, the, the greatest ones are when you get to... <laughs> to, to, to spread, was, to spread oh, your hatred. It took me a second there to figure out what the hell you were talking about. <laughs> to spread your <laughs> hatred across the world. You know, oh, I want to. Okay. 
I want to call someone a, a piece of shit with an accent. Like I, I see you rubes on on the street all the time. Like the best is when you get into like a FIFA game and it's some British dude and you get you get called a wanker and like like it, it, those are the best ones. <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, yeah, I, I want to be insulted in languages I don't understand. Yeah, I, I I don't know how much of effect. None of us know what the hell's going on in China, so I'm sure there's probably plenty of people who are upset about it. And then at the same point, I don't know. There's probably plenty of Chinese that don't even understand. Don't even. Pay I just don't know care. how the logistics of this work either, because you know, like if you're on the PSN network, it's it's just a network like that that connects everybody like how do you block the psn network to just china like i don't know how the logistics of that works i mean it's the same way that it, you know you get different search results when you go into you know google and if you're in china and you're lo- using google maps or apple maps it doesn't recognize taiwan just because you like just because you're sitting <laughs> like they these companies can absolutely change a lot of things uh based off of because in order for them to operate in China China's going to say you've got to do certain things you've got to restrict certain behavior when you're coming from an ISP here in China yeah and it's again brings us to that point of China using their financial power to dictate rules to the to the rest of the world like I, I'd really just wish a PlayStation or a Google would just be like nah fuck you we ain't doing that shit you, you figure it out motherfuckers and if they get caught out of the Chinese market like Essentially, if if Nintendo and PlayStation stopped working in these countries, there man, there there's be a lot of pissed off Chinese people, and that's how change gets invoked. Like I don't know, I like it, this just leaves us such a bad taste in my mouth. Yeah. All right, let's I guess move uh, move forward because we we don't have a dedicated fuck China segment here, and uh, we're no. we're, 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 we're was, going down that, was, that rabbit hole. Fuck China, Jason. <laughs> yeah, we're going <laughs> we're going down that rabbit hole. So. Let's let's uh let's just jump through the rest of uh, entertainment here as we got some deeper uh, tech things coming up. But uh, first, I guess our next one is NBC Universal's Peacock soft launch. Uh, I guess yeah, you call it. yeah, weird weird launch entrance uh, with some of you. Some of you listeners may have access to it now. So yeah, if you're a Comcast customer, uh, NBC Universal the the Peacock app launched for X One and some other expensive uh comcast branch you know so if you have comcast you can go to the peacock app possibly in your cable box um that launched april 15th um but it won't launch for the general public until july 15th uh essentially they wanted to wait till the olympics and do a a big launch with the olympics but since the olympics is postponed they're like well shit and now they're just kind of doing a, a soft rollout, and they're going to officially roll it out July 15th. So if you want to watch Universal products and you're a Comcast customer, you get to go that. Uh, drop us a line on the uh, Cantina group if you use it, what you think, and let us know how it is because I'm a cord cutter. I don't have that shit. <laughs> yeah, I was just saying. Yeah, n- me neither. And I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I, I didn't see if they were launching any like their original content. It's probably just all of their universal nbc kind of i'd still like to know what their back catalog is consi- going to consist of yeah yeah for sure i think uh it's it's they've got a lot they've got a lot that's going to exist in there and they they just released like the the trailers for the the new save by the bell reboot boom it's it's, it's, gonna, it's it's gonna be interesting i'm i'm all for it man i <laughs> hope it's tragically great <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then uh, last last one here in entertainment is oh, we this talked. Is, we we this talked. Is uh, I think it was two weeks ago. We talked about it at an esports event. How we had somebody losing a sponsor for just rage quitting in the middle of a race uh, in these NASCAR esports uh, race events that they're doing in lieu of having an actual NASCAR event. And then this See, week, but, but that, like the rage quit, we could all sympathize with. Yeah, like so. So the rage quit is excusable. And it's something we can all sympathize with. This, <laughs> this is just a whole nother level of idiocy that I I don't even know what to say. Yeah. So Kyle Larson is now suspended indefinitely from NASCAR events uh, for for using a racial slur in an open channel uh, 
on an esports event. So, well, and broadcast- so, so you so you instantly hear that, and you think like he's losing, and he gets all mad yeah. and just drops the end bomb, like, "Oh, god damn it, you!" Blah blah blah. Like, no, he wasn't sure if people could hear him on his mic. So instead of doing a test test one two one two he drops a hey n words yeah he's like, like he's a, hey can you hear me can you hear me hey and hey, hey n word hey, <laughs> like, it's like oh yeah no are you, what, yes, yes we can, we we can, can hear all you kyle hear you <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you dude what the fuck uh, is wrong with you like and that's that is one of the most more challenging things i don't know <laughs> I don't know what, I mean, I guess I should know what's worse, whether you just say it intentionally with like pure like racism, hatred, or in this instance where you just say it with complete ignorance to just what the word is, like to to just knowing what the impact of the word is. Like you just, you just said it like, hey bro, hey dude. Well, the way he said it, you just have to assume it's part of his daily vocabulary. Oh, absolutely. There's no way. There's no way. He can't get away from it and just be like, oh, I, it, it just, it, this is something I never do. Never say it. It's like, <laughs> man, that was so casually off your tongue. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're, like, man, like, yeah, ain't nobody coming to bat for you, Kyle. Like, yeah, you're, you're done. You're done, buddy. I, I hope, like, I hope you do other things well instead of just driving yeah. fast. <laughs> hope you're good with tools, buddy. I hope you're good is... with tools. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, so, well. Farewell, Kyle Larson. It's definitely a NASCAR has NASCAR embraced this esports thing, which we talk about. I, I wish more sports would do it. I wish there was just not because I would sit and watch a Madden game between people, but I'd I'd probably check out the highlights between. Uh, oh yeah, or the, something the country else. Like, the country is hurting for sports. The Michael yeah. Jordan documentary released last night, and the entire country was glued to this Michael Jordan documentary they aired the first two episodes and then it went directly into sports center and the first 15 minutes of 20 minutes of it, sports is them center recapping the is them dissecting the first two episodes of the jordan episode of course it is what, what else did they talk about and like the my, the while i was watching it the funniest commercials are like they're showing all these great highlights of like w- people winning championships and all these different sports highlights and then it just like fades to an espn logo and at the bottom of it just says yeah yeah, we miss it too. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Oh, that's great! That's fucking great!" <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I mean, it, it was cool that NASCAR embraced the esports thing, but they've now had two, uh, two, two drivers losing sponsorships because of behavior on these esports events. It's kind of like, well, these. It seems that these, while NASCAR was ready to embrace it, it seems like the drivers were not ready for this. Yeah, I, I, I'm wondering why more sports aren't, aren't trying to do something like this. I mean, you have a lot of uh, musicians and artists doing like, so like the rappers are doing rap battles via like Instagram Live and stuff. So like producers are, are going beat for beat. Rappers are going line for line. You got NASCAR doing, you know, like this is a good opportunity to see a different side of some of your favorite, you know, personalities. And I think a lot of people are just dropping the ball by like fading into this quarantine to where when things come back, I don't know if the interest is going to be as high as it was when it left. Yeah, I, I especially once I think live sports is as far as people going to stadiums and stuff, that's still more than a year out. So be curious uh, how the sports industry is going to hold up. Yeah, I mean, COVID might keep me the reigning 2020 fantasy football champ in our in our <laughs> league. <laughs> I'll, I'll take a, a three-peat by default. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's get out of entertainment and let's talk over some uh, some tech news here. And first one is just kind of a follow up. We talked about Zoom in the past and uh, their how they just were not ready for the the spotlight that was put on them with all this COVID stuff and people just living their lives through Zoom. We got this week some new new news on uh, 500,000 accounts. Zoom accred- credential accounts were were lost and they're being sold on uh, on the, the dark web for, it was like 0.02 cents per credential. Uh, so it's like a, <laughs> way less than a penny uh, is what these things are being sold for uh, on the, the dark web. And this... This is just something to, to be aware of and not, this is just an opportunity for us to remind people to change your passwords 
know know what your passwords are and turn on two th- two factor authentication because while losing your Zoom password probably isn't that big of a deal because really who cares if somebody joins a conference under your name or whatever it happens to be, uh, just recognize that it, these credentials are already being uh, jammed into other yeah, well, banking the fear, services. The fear is is that your Zoom password is the same thing as your Chase password. More than likely it is. And more than likely it's the same <laughs> username, same email address, and same password for your Amazon account, your other e-commerce sites, and your banking. And all they do is they have bots, they, they buy these credentials, and then they just jam all these credentials into every other e-commerce site, uh, just testing them out to see if they can yeah, gain again, access I'll, to I'll something say it juicier. Again. I, f- I feel really bad for Zoom just because we've used Zoom for the last yeah, year to, I love to run our podcast. It's been a great program for us. They were they were doing their steady growth and their steady improvements on like a a realistic schedule, and then this shit hit, and you can't blame them for not being ready for this. Mm-hmm. Like it, it it sucks that this is happening to them, and they're trying to keep up. You know, with with the the security issues and and the, all the users, but there was no fucking way to on to 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 be able to keep up with this. You know, yeah. the the thing that they found out is that out of all the streaming services that you can do these meetings with, that they're obviously the most sought after. So this is a really good marketing for them. Like I've you know, no one's talking about Skype. You know, no one's talking about fucking. What do I see those commercials for Facebook Portal? Like, no, nobody's oh, I, nobody's talking about those things at all. Everybody's on Zoom. So, like, good for them for having the product recognition. Keep working, guys. Uh, like, I, I I feel bad for the company. I really do. Yeah, I, I think it's still. Uh, I mean, they're still doing well. Uh, they're they're plugging along. They've they've added some security features and stuff. So if you're hearing about all the, the different threats and the Zoom bombing and all that stuff, they're they're putting in a bunch of features to to overcome it. It's still probably the best option out there. Uh, I know Google's creating their own uh, Zoom like conferencing uh, capability now. Oh yeah, everyone's scrambling Every, yeah, to, everybody's to, building to, it to figure out, out their own right now. So we'll uh but this is just a reminder that again, if you if you use, reuse passwords, even if you've got the best you know twenty character password with special characters, or whatever else, but you only have that one that you use on every single site, well, Zoom loses it, some other website loses it, and then all of a sudden it gets jammed into every other site. And, I, and I'm going to take this time right now to put out a PSA that stop filling out those fucking questionnaire memes on know, Facebook, you fucking plebs. Like, <laughs> like you think you're, you're just giving everybody a window into your life. No, you are giving hackers every fucking security password answer that you might have. Like, stop. Use your brains. Like, be smarter than this. But but I want everybody to know what the first make and model of my car yeah. was. <laughs> like, don't you want to know what my first grade teacher's name was? No, I don't give a shit. But that fucking hacker does. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck? It is. It, it you know, is weird. What was your first pet's name? Like, gee, I've I've filled out these answers before. I can't remember where. Like, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> there, there was a lot of those going around last week. I know. It was yeah. You guys are getting some bonuses today. None of this shit was on the outline. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going off on some rants right now. <laughs> All right. Well, next one is to to. We'll yeah, this one can this we'll one can pre warn me about. I don't know anything about this. Uh he's about to drop some knowledge on me that he so, thinks is gonna make me mad. I think we got caught up maybe a little little too much into to COVID uh over the last couple weeks or whatever else. And uh, this one kind of passed by me uh and I, I I missed it. And this is a bipartisan bill that was was presented. Uh it's called the Earn It Act. And it stands for Eliminating abuse and rampant neglect of internet or interactive technologies. So we'll just call it earn it uh, from from this point on. <laughs> and it's uh, it's been presented by Senators Lindsey Graham uh, on the Republican side and Richard Blumenthal and, and Richard Blumenthal <laughs> 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 and Blumenthal on the Democratic side. So it's got bi- bipartisan support. Uh, it's it's getting pushed through and it is it is to protect the children. Uh, as many things are always, yeah, as as many things are oftentimes veiled behind the, the think about the children, uh, and I, I got kind of deeply looking into this. I even watched Senator Graham's uh, initial address or his introduction of the bill. Uh, I, I went back and watched this. This was about a month ago that it was originally uh, briefed into 
the Congress chambers. And what we what it's about is removing what's called Section 230. Section 230 is the exemption that allows internet companies to not take liability for people doing illegal stuff on their platforms. So if if I'm in any way communicating with somebody. So if I'm selling heroin through Facebook Messenger, Facebook Messenger could be liable. They, and they can't. So Section yeah. 230 means that they can't be liable, that they can't it can't be held liable for what people on their platforms do, which is important because these companies can't do that without it completely violating everybody's privacy to scan every single tax, every single thing. Uh, so Section 230, what they're saying, the the Earn It Act, and the reason why they named it so they could call it Earn It, is that they're saying these companies have to earn Section 230 privileges. So in order to earn Section 230, uh, the lack of liability, they have to put in certain measures to ensure that at this time, what they're talking about is they have to play ball in fighting uh, child abuse, child sexual sex scandals, and, yeah, and so, whatever. So that's that's the thing they're gonna get it. Be like, look, we're just we're trying to get sex traffickers, and we're trying to get you know like child abductions and and all this. But really, essentially, they're just trying to turn every major tech corporation into a fucking narc. Yes, yeah. I mean, they, they, that's exactly what it is. So they they they're not saying what this isn't doing although there is some language in the law uh, when it's analyzed by EFF that EFF says could absolutely be used by the attorney general to have the government go into text messages the government go into me- messaging services uh, but what what's on the surface what they're saying is this isn't the government going and reading your messages or whatever else this isn't what this is is doing is saying Facebook Twitter Apple uh, it's their responsibility WhatsApp, to it's go their through. it's their responsibility to report. And if they're not doing certain measures to to put themselves in a position to report, then they can be held liable for somebody sharing some, some kid nudes through yeah, WhatsApp so or whatever. So they'll use like the RICO Act to bring Zuckerberg into a you know a black market sale of something or yeah, it, and it's the the penalties can be pretty severe in this, and it it will end essentially what EFF and everybody says is it's going to end end to end encryption. It's going to end private messaging servers, private messaging, you know, the WhatsApps and all that stuff because in the end, you can't have end to end encryption. If the company is going to be held liable for what you're saying on there, then they can't allow you to have private messaging. They're yeah, going back, to have to scan it and read every single snail mail. thing. Back to fucking and, snail mail. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is this is so messed up. Like it's it's so like I get so frustrated when they use the public safety as a guise to just like look man we we want we don't care about personal freedoms we don't care about personal privacies because we want to catch all the criminals and we don't care if we have to treat everybody like a criminal in order to do it you know so like our country was founded on treating everyone like an innocent citizen until you could be proven as a criminal. Now we are shifting it to where, no, we're just going to treat everyone like you're a nefarious piece of shit and you have to prove to us that you're not a piece of shit and then we'll let you, we'll let you go, which is, man, it's it, so fucked up. It, it is, it, it is incredibly fucked up and it's potentially damaging to, to all of free speech and, uh, everything that exists on the internet as far as when you hold these companies liable, it, one, it's going to shut down any small company. So no small company can then, no yeah, because they get busted once, they, yeah, they're they, bankrupt. They're out. They, they can't handle the liability. So no, it'll kill any startup, any competitor to any of these messaging services, any of these big companies. It'll kill any competitive advantage that any small company has because they don't have Section 230 pr- uh, privileges unless they're willing to just completely put in expensive measures in place to scan and track and report every potential flagged item uh, that, that comes through. So there'll be no startups. And then it just damages free speech in general. Uh, and the language in it, when analyzed by EFF, is saying that like it's going to give a ton of power. The, the, the person who has like pretty much authority to determine what these companies have to report and what back doors they have to put in is the attorney general. And the attorney... So it gives way too much power to the attorney general appointed by the president to just go after political aims and to, to be really targeted. So yes, it's, yeah. it's right now being talked about with child uh sex abuse and yep that's great we we should absolutely next thing you try know, to they're reading combat every that. message from the biden campaign next thing you know they're reading every message you know for local and in state governments you know like yeah it's whatever whatever political party is in power will be using it to 
to quash the the other party in in all kinds of ways. It's the the amount of terrible things you can do with this are are far outweigh catching you know the slim amount of bad guys you're going to catch. Well, and it's funny that you know you you said that if you you know just a minute ago you talk about well we've got to go back to snail mail if you want a private message you got to go back to snail mail. This this is akin to USPS saying oh we're going to open up every single letter and read every single letter just in case you were sending. <clears throat> nudes of a kid in your letter yep. like this is this is no different than them saying that but for whatever reason because it's in the tech world and we can make algorithms that can f- flag keywords and whatever else that all of a sudden it's less it's less a violation of the privacy to the federal government but it really shouldn't be treated in any different way well i i, I we recently found out that snail mail is not even safe because a uh, little personal story you sent the kids uh some easter books right thank you because yeah. i've don't think we called you and thanked you yet. Well, the one you sent Layla was a kid's book that had five pages of a hundred stickers inside. Well, when we opened up the fucking when we opened up the mail, every single page of stickers was ripped out of that book. Really? <laughs> there there are just five <laughs> serrated tabs in the beginning of this book with no fucking stickers. So <laughs> so your fucking snail mail isn't even safe. It's not safe. No, that that's just somebody <laughs> That's just somebody tweaking out on the Amazon warehouse floor, just putting stickers all over the place. <laughs> yeah. yeah, nobody, we're, we're none of us to say, folks. Like, it's but, time, to, time to riot. So th- I, I did want to make sure that we spent a decent amount of time talking about this Earned Act, because I, I do find this to be a significant overreach by the federal government. Uh, you, you've got, there's some articles I'll put into the show notes at the nerdcantina.com forward slash show 77. Uh, you can read the article from EFF. Well, and, there, and the way, the way like our government is running, that is the one thing you can pretty much guarantee is that if there's a bipartisan bill, it's either really good for us or really bad for us. There's, there's going to be no like bipartisan bill that's like, oh, you know, there's some good, there's some bad. And like, no, if, if it's really good, it's either to going to boost, boost the economy or boost whatever. And it's going to give good PR to both parties. Or it's so evil that both parties are doing like the Mr. Burns yeah. finger taps. Like, ooh, how can I get this? Like, yeah, go ahead. Let's, let's pass this in. I'm, I'm going to use it to fuck you. You're going to use it to fuck me, but we could both use it to fuck everybody. So let's just do it. So, yeah, and this is, I don't know, this, this is where even like if you watch the 12 minute address that Lindsey Graham gives as the introduction to the bill, he just talks about it being no, that, uh, oh, well, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I did. So I could talk about it here and let you know now to watch it. Um, but he even talks about the fact that, you know, this, this is to protect the kids and the, the internet's a dark and scary place and these messaging ser- servers or whatever else and, and the parental tools and stuff that are available out there, you know, it's, it's difficult to navigate. It's difficult to understand and the single mothers out there don't have time to figure this stuff out. So this is where the federal government has to come in and, and be that protection for the, the children. It's like, nope, that's, that's actually no, not what the federal government's <laughs> job is. <laughs> that's, no, thanks. No, that's, thanks. That's not it. Like you can't, don't just say because, oh, because there's some technologically inept parents out there uh, that this means that the federal government should have the legal right to spy on everybody's messages and completely make it illegal to have NN encryption and private messaging in the United States. Uh, so this is a, a large overreach. Uh, go visit the EFF. If you don't already support the EFF, at least by joining their mailing list, uh, do so. EFF is a great... Uh, you know, this e- is the first step website. to them banning Animal Crossing in our country. Like, this is like, these are the steps that you take to get to that point where we are doing fuck China stories. Like, <laughs> we are we are inching towards fuck America stories. Like, <laughs> this is not good. Yeah, so the, you can go on the EFF website, go to the article, and uh, there is EFS already has like a digital petition that you can go on their website, read about it yourself, uh, or at least just go to the website and hit the take action button, join the, the digital petitions to to try to support and stop uh, this Graham Blumenthal uh, proposal. On yeah, we, have a, we have a new Cantina member that is very versed on this and has been writing comments in, in all our stories. I see I see a thousand word comment coming from Vaudrey. <laughs> shout out to Va- shout out to new <laughs> Cantina member Vaudrey. She's, she's going to drop drop some kind of knowledge on this comment section. <laughs> but definitely get involved. Uh, take a look at it, and I guess uh, we can jump from this 
PSA of uh, of something to be concerned about and just another PSA. Really, this isn't necessarily news. There's nothing new going on with uh, with TikTok. But what we see is the explosion of TikTok. It was already the most downloaded app yeah, in, the, are just in the world at last home year. And want to watch these damn videos. And yeah, all these stupid like I actually I still have never been on TikTok. But apparently it's just it. apparently it's just full of dance videos. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> because there's dance videos, little comedy lip syncs, like I have a lot of friends that have started TikTok videos like it's like guys, they are they are raping your data. Yeah. They are aggregating it all. It's China. Yeah. They are Quick. not going to do anything good with it. Like, stop like being complacent to a Chinese government trying to overthrow our country. Yeah. So this is just a just a reminder here, just PSA that as you're bored and just trying to to download TikTok, as you for whatever reason want to l- learn some 15 second choreographed dance, uh, just don't do it. Just stay away from TikTok. It's, read a fucking book, there's, man. There's nothing. Read a there, fucking book. We got book reviews on the website. I just I bought mean, Bent Heavens. Like, like, let's get down. Start a book club. Do some shit, man. Fuck that TikTok. It's, yeah, it, it. Every security expert in the United States. Well, every is probably an overstatement. There's probably some that are paid for by China. Um, yeah. but, <laughs> but, but the majority of security experts in the United States are saying that this is a real threat. Like, there's you are you are handing over significant amount of data and tracking. There's a reason why the Department of Defense does not allow people to have the TikTok uh, app on any government devices, but also you can't have the TikTok app if you're on, say, like government shipping or whatever else, because they are they are using location data. They are they have full access to all the data, and it is going back to Chinese nationalist servers. So well, just and YouTube's understand. coming out with a competitor that's an American base. I'm sure they're not going to do much better with the data, but if you're looking to make stupid videos or watch stupid videos there are, there are other options yeah. out there can't you just go back to vine is that still a thing i don't know no no that, that, <laughs> that, that, died, that died a long time ago a long time ago isn't R. That R. all this is r.i.p R. vine isn't that all this is this is, seems very similar to just what vine was i didn't do vine either but i it, yeah but like so so there's a lot of people making money off tiktok because they got so many followers and stuff but i'm starting to think that like Part of the money is coming from the Chinese government to increase popularity to get more users. You know, so like if you're a if you're a popular TikToker and you're getting you're getting paid from from TikTok views, that might be yen. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't I don't know. Like like because the the popularity of this app just shot up the minute quarantine went. Because every every mom and, like wanted said, to watch these TikTok It was already the most TikTok downloaded videos. app in 2019, and then my, this year it's blown up. My only hope is is that so many Karens have downloaded it that the kids will stop using it. <laughs> like that's 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 my only hope <laughs> is that so many Brendas are on TikTok now doing really shitty Millie Wops, <laughs> and, <laughs> and the kids are gonna be like, "Yeah, I'm out." <laughs> like, oh, yeah. I'm out. <laughs> YouTube Shorts is out. I'm gonna go to YouTube. YouTube shorts. <laughs> that's oh, that's my only hope at this point. Yeah, it's again. That's that's just our PSA there. Uh, that's just our shot at. Yeah, I guess I've that was so our... many. I've seen so many people downloading it and participating now that I just felt like we had to readdress this, even though there was no story attached to it. <laughs> just fuck China. Yeah, fuck China. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, and then some other uh, tech news. We'll, we'll get into one that's. Uh, couple that are COVID related. Uh, one is, so coming from uh, New York uh, News uh, in New Jersey, they're they're talking about these drones uh, that are now being done. One of the, the oldest drone manufacturing company has created drones that uh, will go ahead and hover over city streets and it's it's going like full predator view on you the whole time. So full yeah. thermal view on you the whole time and it can detect, it's going to scan and detect algorithmically Everybody's body temperature. It can stand, it can scan respiratory rates, heart rates, uh, body temperature when you're sneezing and coughing, and and it will scan for social distancing cues if you're staying if you're closer than six feet apart from somebody. And this is just going to hover. And I just imagine this is just drones that are going to be hired by New York and New Jersey, these hardest hit areas, and it's just going to be shouting with a megaphone at people to stay the fuck have away. You, hey, you. you. The, no, have you seen? They're already doing that. Yeah, they're like, already so doing that, that. I've already seen that on the but, news. Police drones with speakers just saying, hey, yeah. back the fuck up. <laughs> like, but, that, but that's just them 
floating around. This is autonomously scanning your body temperature and detecting your distance yeah, from so, each other. So and I just get done running a 5K, and next thing you know, five hours later, I got eight assholes in N95 masks pounding on my fucking door asking who I've talked to and shoving a swab down my goddamn esophagus. Yeah, well, good thing you're not running 5Ks anytime soon. Hey, motherfucker, I ran three <laughs> miles this week. I'm trying to get rid of I, I, Vegas trip this at the end of this, the year. I'm trying to, trying to drop 25 pounds. I, I ran three miles this week, dick. <laughs> All right, I stand corrected. You'll run one 5K. Um, this, this is just weird, and... Again, this is not where I want to see technology being used. This is not what I want to see the government hiring. I don't know yet how this is going to exploit our citizenship, yeah, but it will. It, now, they, now they put it on. Now they put facial recognitions on it. And if you got bench warrants, if you got outstanding parking tickets, if you got, you know, God only knows. Like, man, this is just police state. Here we oh, come. Yeah. Or they, know? or they make being, you know, closer than six feet and mask wearing, or whatever else, enforceable, or whatever else. So then they face scan you. They take a picture of you, just like a red light camera, and then all of a sudden in the mail you get a ticket two weeks later for being for violating social distancing or for not wearing face covering or whatever it happens to be, uh, and then you've just got to legally dispute that. I don't know, that wasn't me, or <laughs> uh, yeah. however it goes. So this is this just gets to yeah, a police state, a technologically enabled authoritarian police state that I don't care to. I, on the surface, it sounds like oh okay, cool, we're gonna have little drones that are gonna detect if somebody's got a fever over 100 degrees. But then what are they going to do about it? Yeah. Is cops going to go swarm swarm the local park because somebody in the park has a fever over 100 degrees? I don't I don't know what the the end state is. I just don't like it. Yeah, I, like I just don't understand. Like we we all look at countries like North Korea and China and talk about how shitty it must be to live there. Yet we just are complacent in letting all these like baby steps to getting us to that point go by. Like I and, and it's all because they they you try to use our feels against us. Like, don't you want to save the old people from Corona? Don't you want to save the kids? Don't you want to? Nah, not at my cost of my freedom. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I'm the asshole. Nana and Papa, they lived a good life. <laughs> if they fucking die off so that I'm not tracked by fucking drones all you know all day, so be it. See you later. I don't give a fuck. Call me the asshole. I don't give a shit. Yeah, it it's really it, this is this is what we talked about last week. This is the the scary approach towards you know, sneaking through authoritarian principles in order to uh, to to save lives. Even the the, the Elizabeth Police Department in this article, uh, you know, they were they were quoted saying that oh, these drones are used to save not lives, not to be Big Brother. Well, I mean, Big Brother. Sure, Big Brother can save lives. Like I get, I get that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, it's a good. It's a like, good I'm back sorry, I'm, I'm not giving up my freedoms so boomers can suck Social Security dry for another 25 fucking years. I'm not doing it. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. This, yeah, 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 yeah. that's why I said it. I, I said I, it, I motherfucker. Mean, <laughs> I said it. <laughs> that's right. He said it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In the end, uh, this is uh, just just more things to to pay attention to. Pay attention in, in your your neck of the woods. I don't understand what happens to. I, I I feel like the people who run for government positions are already like they they apparently already pro government people that think it's the government's job to f- to fix everything, which is why you get things like the Earn It Act and and these these drones or whatever else that they have to put the government in position uh, in order to track and fix everything. And uh, and that's really where the state of of this current legislation. None of it's passed yet, so there's still time to to voice your concerns uh, and hopefully prevent some of these things from from being massively adopted. Yeah, uh, fuck. And then uh, let's. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm just really biting right. my tongue right now. <laughs> let's let's go with some some happy news. All right, let's let's end on some some uh some some good news for the week. And uh, first one being. Jack Dorsey, uh, this was last week. We just failed to talk about it. And uh, we wanted to make sure we've given other billionaires their time to shine with with uh, Elon Musk and everybody else. But Jack Dorsey pledged last week a, a billion dollars uh, of his stake in Square towards a couple different things. First priority was COVID-19 relief. And then uh, his second and third pri- priorities were uh, 
was it women's rights or women's abuse uh, yeah, protections? I thought it was domestic abuse. Yeah, it, uh, protections. And then his third one was uh, to further universal basic income and support universal basic income. Which so, really piqued my interest that that somebody like Jack Dorsey is willing to put a billion dollars towards like, I don't know, like, I don't know how he's going to put the money. So I would love to see him take like a 20,000 person town and just inject UBI for an entire year into the entire town, spend, you know, what the 50 million it would cost to to give everybody there a thousand dollars a month and then spend another fifty million on eggheads to quantify and and crunch all the the numbers, do interviews and and put together a really scientific based study on how UBI can affect a small community and then try to roll it out into to bigger areas and and really spearhead this this movement. Cause if you haven't found out on this show by now i'm a very big supporter of the of the ubi movement and i am not um <laughs> i'm in i'm in the middle ground where i think it it potentially could help but uh i'm not i'm not sold that ubi is the the best way forward for, uh, for it's humanity. not like the entire country isn't on ubi this month i mean yeah we we I mean, we're not because it was a one-time payment and nobody can count on it. Nobody can count on whether it's going to actually support them in the future. Uh, and same as I don't think UBI actually prevents anybody from being in in a shitty footing when this stuff happens anyway. Like, okay, you give somebody $1,000 a month in UBI, all they do is increase their expenses by $1,000 a month. They go buy a bigger house. They get rent a bigger place. They buy some. a new car. Yeah, some. The vast majority, right? The vast, I don't, vast I don't think majority. The, no, I don't think the vast majority. I, I, I think that $1,000 so. gets eaten up by regular expenses. So that way, when something like this happens, they still have nothing in savings. They still have no way to 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 weather the storm. See, $1,000 a think- month is still going to be so far below their monthly expenditures that everybody's still in crisis. So... I, I agree that a, a percentage of it every month would go to something like that. But I think the larger percentage is going to go to eating out at local restaurants, which stimulates the economy, uh, buying more groceries, eating better at home, which stimulates the economy, uh, stocking some of it away so you can remodel your bathroom, remodel your kitchen, um, which which stimulates the economy and helps other small businesses. Like, yes, every once in a while, someone's going to blow 150 bucks to $400 on an Xbox, a fucking TV, a blah, blah, blah. But after a year, two years, you're going to have lots of things you're going to run out of things that you want um cuz cuz your life your i don't think your life is going to move upwards at the rate where you're able to just keep buying material goods i think the largest portion is going to go to small businesses and companies in local areas that that are going to stimulate the economy and and keep businesses thriving and and improve quality of life for almost everybody if that was true, there wouldn't be so many people making six-figure salaries that are in complete crisis mode right now. And the, and the vast majority of them are because it doesn't matter how much money you make. If you increase your expenditures and whatever else, then that money disappears. You still have no greater safety net than somebody who's making minimum wage. So that's the the, the truth that I see most people. So that's why I'm not a big, big proponent of it. I, I oftentimes think, I mean, many people live above their means and it doesn't matter what their means are. Whether they make twenty thousand dollars a year or one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year, they live above their means. An extra thousand dollars a month isn't going to prevent them from having that type of financial literacy. I mean, yes, and I, I I agree with the the mindset. I think the percentages of people that do that, I think we would differ on. You know, I don't think there Maybe. are as many people making six figures a year that live beyond their means as people that make forty thousand a year, fifty thousand a year no. that live beyond their means. So yeah, I. I I'm in no way saying those who make that it's it's just as easy to live beneath your means if you make less money. I'm just saying that I, I think I, I don't think UBI is the solution for this problem. I think it's a solution for a lot of for for other problems and it, it does make, increase quality of living for others. Um, I just don't think it I don't think it's the thing that people are championing right now saying, oh, we wouldn't have this problem if there was a UBI. Yes, we would. Well, because people's I, bills I, still wouldn't be What I paid. really like about it is that it doesn't it. It's it's a way to get people to stop turning to the government for help for everything. So if you're giving everybody a thousand dollars a month, if you hit a a pothole in life, you can't turn to the government and say, "Hey, fix this." 
Like, nah, man, we're already giving you a G a month. Like, <laughs> figure it out. You know what I mean? Like, I think this is just a great way for the government to wipe its hands of, you know, the, the small issue problems that many Americans hit all the time. You know, like, if, if you're already getting $1,000 a month from the government, you don't get to turn to them for financial aid for college. You don't get to turn to them for, for money for health care. You don't get to turn to the government to solve every little issue that is is going on in every american's life look here here's 12 grand a fucking year figure it the fuck out you're on your own don't come to me i again i i've we're full of off script tangents today (laughs) 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 i I, I hope dorsey i hope dorsey you know initiates a program where we could actually get some like hard data on this yeah, you know, because right now it's all theoretical. We're all just we're all just spitballing here, if, and, if and there's really it, not not much to 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 actually quantify these things. And Andrew Yang started Humanity First, uh, his charity, his nonprofit that's supporting UBI. It's giving small communities UBI already, and it's raising money to to roll it out more and to continue to prove it. So I follow it because I'm I'm interested in it. I just don't. I'm just not fully when you behind got it. people when you got people like Dorsey putting this kind of money behind it. There's there obviously is some validity to it. You know what I mean? Economists have, have some economists have backed it. Others haven't. You know, it's, it's really wishy washy, but the, it, it's not junk science. It's not some kind of like just fucking Atkins diet trend that people are pushing. You know, it's, there is some validity to it. All right. Moving on. Let's, <laughs> let's get through these last, uh, let's just talk some, uh, some space stories here. And we've got, uh, this week, for the first time ever, we had a, a robotic spacecraft caught an old satellite to extend its life. <laughs> that's, that's pretty that's crazy. Pretty, pretty fucking cool. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, I mean, that's, that's pretty cool as we look at space junk being a big issue. These satellites eventually deorbit and they they end up causing uh, causing issues as they they lose their their life. It's one of these problems, especially as we look at all these like low Earth orbit satellites getting launched. And the the question is is what's their What's their life cycle? It looks like when when you know, SpaceX and Starlink is approved for forty two thousand low Earth orbit satellites right now by the FCC. Well, what happens to those forty two thousand satellites when they go dead or when they're l- running out of their their orbiting life cycle? Well, apparently we can just send some drone, uh, other <laughs> some fucking uh, other space, space Roomba just to, just to, <laughs> yeah, just to float around and nudge them back out further out into orbit so it could uh, extend their life. Some fucking space Roomba. It, it, hey. Yeah, it, it's like, it's it, amazing to me what uh what these the scientists in the uh, space field are are doing and capable of doing. So this is actually a really really yeah. cool uh kind of story. First time it's happened. Hopefully, it happens. Nerd to a solving of nerd problems, yeah. man. I love it. I love go, it. Go <laughs> go swoop up all of those other falling satellites and either either bring them back or push them back Throw to you. A Chinese one into the sun every once in a while for us, will you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. this one that yeah, chuck it yeah. right behind you <laughs> all right and then uh and then the really the last uh story it's it's more of uh just a interesting image to to see is uh we've got a a star that is but orbiting a black hole <laughs> Orbiting a black hole, yeah. yeah. So, and, it, and you can the, so they they put up a a like a, a GIF model of of how it orbits, and it's like it's crazy because it's more of an oval. Yeah. So at, at the bottom part, it gets really close to the black hole, and then it just shoots it far as fuck into into space, <laughs> and then sucks it back down. And like, just to think though that it, like. It's a giant fireball, man. <laughs> it's just, like it's not like a rock, you know. It's not. It's not like you know, like it's you know, a moon orbiting a black hole or something like that. Like this is a giant fucking fireball. It's just at any point, if it leaves this, bla- if the black hole shoots it far enough to where it doesn't hold its its gravitational pull anymore, there's just gonna be a giant fireball whizzing through fucking outer space, man. Like this is insane. It's. I mean, that's what all the fireballs are, is whizzing through outer space. So, <laughs> Well, like, out of control, out of out, outer space, you know? So, like, we're all whizzing, you know, like, if it's it's like when you're doing 80 on the freeway next to a guy. Like, when you look over, you're at the same, you're <laughs> at the same, like, kind of speed. So, you're both, like, still in motion, you know? 
then you get the fucking dude in the Lotus flying past you at 100 miles an hour. It, yeah, if that Lotus was on fire, it's going to shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's cool. It's a cool image. So uh, if, if you want to check it out, these are things shared over at the, the nerdcantina.com forward slash community. I'm so wondering join what us over happens there. When, when that motherfucker eats it. Like, where's that going to go? <laughs> <laughs> Does it go into the system? <laughs> I know, it, it is pretty crazy to you know the gravitational pull of a of a of a black hole that is orbiting a star that normally has its own or it has orbiting its own items. Fucking orbits, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like is, we got what nine planets that orbit ours, like, and this is within the the, the Milky Way. Did I get Way. that number right? Nine. We have nine planets, I mean, right? To, to give or take. Sounded uh, right. It felt good. <laughs> it felt good. <laughs> give or take. It depends. What, what do we? What do we call Pluto these days? <laughs> but yeah, it, it's it's cool. It's a cool image. Uh, the, the space is a is an amazing thing. And again, this is in the Milky Way. So this is the first time they've they've seen a star uh, within the Milky Way orbiting around a black hole. So they've got some models to to demonstrate how crazy it is. So go ahead and check that out over at uh, the Nerd Cantina. Yeah, no, the, the image is really cool. Yeah. So, all right. And those were our nice stories to, to break us from our tangents and to break us from our depressing talk. And, uh, and yeah. thanks for sticking with us through through all of the, the sidebars. <laughs> all of our mindful rants <laughs> and, and, and opinions. <laughs> and uh, if you've got some uh, opinions, uh, either for or against uh, some of what we're saying here, please scream over at us over on Facebook or on the website, Twitter. Find us somewhere. Uh, let us know what you think. And uh, and engage in the conversation as we're just two idiots having uh having a good time talking about these things that are important to us but uh getting a balanced approach making sure that other people are talking about it this is how we maybe defeat some of these things like earn it act and uh and some of these uh, other principles that are are creeping into uh society today yeah and uh right now we have a 30-day video game challenge going on over at the cantina uh the nerdcantina.com forward slash community fun little exercise and and getting to know us gamers a little better so today would be day three so if you're not participating in that head over to the nerd cantina forward slash community drop us some of your favorite video game characters whatever i think today's <laughs> and, uh and mother's today's 420 name. and uh yeah <laughs> and, and your first car and, <laughs> and your name of your first pet <laughs> 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 oh, all right Jesus. damn it let's get out of here all right <laughs> like support us uh hey, please uh find us on uh whatever platform subscribe enjoy uh enjoy the content going forward thanks again nerds for uh for joining us for episode 77 of the nerd cantina show yeah we'll see you next week guys